Hello, Rever here. I am looking at my soil mod spreadsheet and I'd like to explain basically how the spreadsheet works. In this video I'm not going to get into how the soil mod works so much but more focus on what I did with the sheet and what I fill in and and what you would fill in if you wanted to calculate your field yields using this sheet. So let me uh, start off by saying normally I were all the way over here on the right I put in the day that I first started and let's just say this was the first field and I started on day one what I would do is come in here and say okay this was day one on the farm and two three four that way if I lose track you know I kind of have a record of, of where I'm at if I know if I'm at day three on the on the map then I got two more days probably don't need it but I don't know it didn't, doesn't take that long to set it up the next thing to say is all of these green squares including this one over here which is new are the places that I write numbers in if you write in here there's a formula behind that that is actually doing some calculations so if you were to do something before you sow, like cultivate or whatever sometimes I put the number in up here but usually I just write it in down this next line. It doesn't matter. As long as you do it on that day, that first day, whether it's before or after harvesting, the spreadsheet will, will calculate it, though. So I could put a number in here, in other words. Let's say I spread and then uh, cultivated in, you know, some uh, manure or something. I put a score of 8. You can see that that will work for, like, a pre-score. So that's a little confusing that it's in white, but... Like I said, I don't normally write in there. I would normally just write it down here like I did. So when we put in nitrogen, which I have my little cheat sheet right up here for a lot of these different things. This almost tells you, I would say, everything you need to know in order to fill out this sheet. It's, it's really that cut and dry. There are some other little things I'm sure I missed, but that'll get you 95% of it. Or everything you need to know, I guess, to be determined. So... What I did was look up here, 5 nitrogen, boom, minus 0.2 pH, there you go. Now what the sheet's doing is, if you look, I'll take this 5 away for a second. You can see it comes in here and, and added that 5 in. Now, you'd say, well, it only went up 4. Well, that's because what it's part of what it's doing is it's coming over to this box here, and it's subtracting one to get to this day's total. So whatever's in this line is going to happen when it gets to the to the same line. So we were at a 57 water and it went down to 43 because we have a 14 over here. And this is based on this right here, which is from Decker. I think it's even in the README notes from the mod itself. If you were to go into the, the mod folder and, and look in the soil management mod. So it says when stages 1 through 7 consumes 1 nitrogen. And you can see basically 1 through 7. Now again, you say, well, wait a minute, you got it off a little bit. Actually, you know, I don't in the sense that it triggers here. You know, it's sort of one of those. It happens at midnight. It happens right on the line in between Monday and Tuesday. And it helps me to look at it because this is where I'm at today. So if I were to put that line up here, and it just sort of, to me, would be a little bit more deceiving. It's kind of losing it on Tuesday, even though that's the second day. And by that, I mean this number right here. One, two, these are the different growth stages. One through five there. So that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, you put your number in on the green, and it'll subtract out what you need. Like I put a 28 here. If We, we should actually, oh, don't forget that, whenever you're spraying you're adding 14 moisture so at that point you would see that would raise us up and in, in this particular case we'd get right to 57 and you know we would lose these three uh, layers of uh, water so to speak the increments of 14 and we'd be down to about a 57 there you go so the next and the new part that I'd like to go over is this yield and this yield is up here is what I would like to call the base yield. I guess there could be another 
name for it, but the bottom line is this is a number that would represent more or less if you got no bonus from the field at all. Now you're always going to get a little bit of bonus because the pH and the moisture don't go down to zero. So even if you get them to the bottom score, you still get a little bit of bonus from them and go into that. It's the, the calculation itself is not overly straightforward and I don't intend to get into it here. It's just, it's a bit too much math, I think, and that's not my intention with this, uh, with this explanation. But right now, this sheet is predicting a yield of 136,000, but we only got, let's just pretend we got 100,000 off of this field. So you'd say it's broke. No, well, it's just the first time I run the spreadsheet. You need to figure out what this is. It's based on the amount of pixels and the type of crop you're growing. So this is actually numbers that did work out for a field that I had. And you can see that this number was different than this one. And even though it's the same exact field, the same size, and the reason was because this one had corn in it. So as soon as you went to plant corn, part of it is, is the crop density comes into effect. So different crops have a different per acre yield and that's why this number would be different but let's just pretend we had planted canola and we only got a hundred thousand what i would do is come in here and put in a number that i think might be close if this number is still too high like where i'm at fifty-eight thousand, and this is only saying one hundred fourteen thousand, then what i need to do is come in and put in a number that's a little bit lower and eventually I start getting pretty darn close to, you know, the 100,000 there. And then you can keep doing this until you're bored and or get it to be the exact number. See, we're getting awful close there. We might drop it down a little bit more. See, we're still getting a little closer, but still too high. So drop it down a little bit extra. Say now I went too low. So this number is guessing too low. So at the end of the day, I think you guys get the idea. I'm not going to keep doing that on this video, but you can get that number to be exactly. And then what I would do is if I planned on planting canola in this field again, from that point forward, I can just copy that number over. Now, if you notice like here, it's saying that, let's see, let's make sure we get at the right stage. 65,000 would be my yield. So more or less, if I had these numbers to start, which is not necessarily the ones we'd start with, just based on this. So let me, let me even fill that in. So let's say we harvested and we had a two on our PK and we had a 6.4 here. And then we had a 57 there. So that's where we started. And let's just pretend we did nothing to the field or that was our intention was to do nothing we would end up with these numbers at the end and we would end up with a yield of 47,000. Now all of that yield stuff you don't need to worry about if you don't want to. It's nice if you want to try to predict your exact yield. I'm not even so sure that that's that important. I more did all of this in order to create this score. So if you look up here we are at the perfect score. And you've got ones all the way across here and that one represents a full bonus it's not a fraction of the bonus where like here because your score was not perfect you're only going to get 0.85 of the bonus what i did in, in the midst of calculating the yield was just get a number that was actually related to from one to ten so in other words when you see a ten that is your perfect yield i.e right there so as the score drops off or the numbers get, you know, far further from perfect, the score will drop. This is a direct relation to these numbers. So it's just, it's a linear thing. So it's just multiplied directly. It's a little bit complicated. I'm not going to get into it, as I said, but, you know, know that when you, your score is an 8.9, your yield is going to drop by that much. It's going to be what? you could say 11% less than, than his perfect score. So this is a direct correlation to, you know, the amount of yield that you have. 
So if you see a better score, you're going to get a slightly better yield. So, you, you know, whether you put this in or not really doesn't matter. Just know that the score is, is uh, you know, the whole intention of the, the new version of the spreadsheet. The other th one other thing to mention that I usually do, and this is more of a preference thing. I've mentioned this in other videos, is I like to color code my field days. It's probably a little hard to see on the video, but... This one's light blue, and this would be the first day. And this this one might be a field that I started on the second day. So in other words, this one started, you know, on the second. So this one says Monday, so it would actually be Tuesday. So I'll move that down there, and then move this up. And then that way, this help, again just helps me keep track of what I'm spraying on what days. You can see I kind of left some junk in here from before. Uh, actually, this may have been the the field that I had that I was talking about where I where I had the uh, score there. So if we come back, let's just check that out real quick. So oh, I erased my score. I think what was it like sixty eight thousand? So if I put a score of sixty eight thousand in here, boom, sixty three. So you see that how that worked? You know, I took the yield base that I had already calculated and I you know from previous experience put that in and you get a good guess as to what it is if you're off in your numbers here you know this will be off I'm sure the no fields perfect in the real map so that would be something uh, to keep in mind the other thing I usually do jumping jumping around a little bit back to these tabs is take a look at my I have these two brown ones down here and these are just blanks so every time I add a field I usually do it from this quote clean field you know I might even bother to put in a zero here and zero just so I know that it's it's not a real answer and there you go so same thing with my grass field if I have a field I usually don't keep track of grass fields they're not you know it, it's not that hard to figure out it's every day it loses one of each so I usually just go right through and and uh, just spray whatever I'm going to spray. If, if my nitrogen's low, like in this case, I'll spray five of that. You know, if, if the PK is low the next day, I'll you know I'll spray spray some PK on it. You know, add add the moisture or whatever at that point. You know, well, this one takes, if we're going to be exacting, right, that one takes away minus 0.2. So there you go. So this is where my grass field would be on Friday. And, but, again, it's you can use it. I, I think this is nice to, you know, to have. Again, I don't always keep track of it because it's not that hard for me to figure out that the PK is still low. And But, it, but it's a nice place to do a little, if you want to be more exacting than I usually am, you know, here you might end up doing something like that. Again, well, now that wouldn't work out too well, would it? All right, well, the intention of this sheet isn't how to do all that, but there we go. So this would get our PK up to five, and, and again, grass every day grows. Now, I have the same yield thing for the grass field. Uh, again, the first day that you cut it, if this was the first day you cut it, then you need to come into here and put in your number if you want to get a you know, make these two numbers match. Like this, the harvest might have been, you know, 300,000. I'm not going to do too much of this. So because it was 300,000, I know that that happens to be three quarters. Or, you know, three quarters of 400,000 is 300,000. So I'm going to drop this to 12,000. Boom. Boom. So you see how that's absolute, like the score to this is, that's just a direct correlation. You know, whatever this yield is to the harvest. So now I know that that was that. Now there's something to really be careful of in that grass has a partial growth stage. So if you cut it on the first harvest, then you're going to get a lesser number than if you cut it on the second harvest. Usually when a map starts up, it's going to be on this second harvest. So more likely than not, this bonus is going to be where you your harvest yield was. So I really didn't want to match this one up. I wanted to match this one up. And 
we know from just the numbers right a few minutes ago that 660,000 was 400,000. So I want to get this to where, well, no, I want to get this now to match this. So in other words, because I cut it on the second day, I need to make, you know, the actual harvest that I got here match the bonus because that was the second day harvest. <laughs> I hope that made some sense. So I'm going to bring this down even lower. That's not what I wanted to bring down. Bring down this one. Let's say we're getting pretty close. So oops, still come down more. There you go. And again, you can play with that once you get that matched up. Um, which that's getting even closer, close enough for what I'm doing here. So once this second day harvest came in, and the same thing's true here. If you wait two days and then end up cutting your field here, this is the harvest you'll get. If you harvest it this day, that's the harvest you would get. And the more accurate you make it, theoretically, there, there's a little bit of variation in everything anyway. So don't expect to be too accurate with everything but certainly you should be within five percent if you were five percent off it's you know probably because your numbers were at the high and low ranges where things drop a lot and and i would also expect you to be off because if you have tram lines in your field or weeds uh, weeds reduce the yield tram lines reduce the yield the unevenness of the field if you didn't spray it all evenly will will affect the this yield number so i wouldn't be too excited if you weren't dead on you know there's there's a number of reasons why this number is probably not going to be exact but if you are as exacting in your field as you can be then this number should be reasonably close if you don't have tram lines and you spray the herbicide you should be in good shape so if you do download this i did want to oh, by the way here's the yield per hectare hectare or acre which is not the same exact thing so you know if you're doing it in acres you know it's one thing but you can see that definitely when you do corn you get more than when you get canola I had I did not use these numbers they've been on the sheet for a long time and if maybe you guys could figure out a correlation between this and this I'd be more than happy to add it in there you know if there's a way we can put in an acres and actually have it calculate for us but in any event, I did want to point out that I have a link to, you know, a GitHub where you can get the some more information from Decker. And I also have a link to a nice FSUK forum post that just has a whole bunch of stuff. The thing that helped me break through on the calculation was on page 19 of that. But you'll just see there's a million questions answered and asked by a whole bunch of people, and including Decker. He's answered a lot of the a lot of the questions on there. I'm not so sure about recently, but at least from page 19, which was kind of a long time ago, he was busily answering people's questions about the soil mod in some technical detail. So if that's what you're looking for, there you go. So that's basically the basics of the sheet. Um, I'm not going to get into all the behind the scenes stuff, but know that, you know, put your numbers in the green, put your yield in here in order to change and have this match on the first field. And then from that point forward, it should give you a reasonable estimate of what your harvest should be and on which day so you can decide. But at the same time, if you don't want to do any of that, just take a look at this score. The higher the score, the higher the yield. And I will be playing this on my, using this now, from now on, on my Let's Plays. And I'm going to test, give it the test of time. This is all kind of brand new. So if you see anything that's, that looks out of place, just let me know. Be happy to correct it or, or look into it at least. So well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you guys have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.